You know how we're always told that figuring out how ancient animals died is like this big scientific mystery where we have to piece together clues and make educated guesses? Well, it turns out some prehistoric creatures died in ways that are so specific and so absolutely strange that it's like finding a crime scene from a hundred million years ago. Except the crime is just being really, really unlucky. These are some of the most strangest and most bizarre deaths ever found in preserved fossils. So there's this fossil from Mongolia that's basically two dinosaurs who got really, really committed to killing each other. We're talking about a velociraptor and a protoceratops. And these guys are frozen mid-fight for what's been 75 million years now. The velociraptor has its famous sickle claw stuck right in the other guy's neck. Meanwhile, the protoceratops decide to bite the velociraptor's arm clean off. Both of them are just sitting there in the rock, still holding onto each other after all of this time. Now, here's where it gets weird. Scientists think they both died at the exact same moment. Not one killed the other and then died later. No, they just went down together. The leading theory is that a sandstorm hit while they were fighting and just buried them alive. Imagine being so focused on murder that you don't notice a literal wall of sand coming at you. Their idea is that they fell into some mud or quicksand while wrestling and couldn't get out. Either way, these two spent their last moments trying to kill each other and ended up creating the most expensive murder fossil in history. The protoceratops broke the velociraptor's arm with its beak, but the raptor got its revenge by slashing the herbivore's throat. Neither one backed down and now they're the poster children for taking things too far. Death by stubbornness, preserved for science. But at least those guys were trying to kill each other on purpose. This is the fearsome Corgosaurus Rex. His name is Flapjack. And if you don't like and subscribe, he literally is going to eat you. Look at his face. This is a fearsome apex predator from the prehistoric period. You don't want to mess with him. The next fossil makes the fighting dinosaurs look smart. We've got a pterosaur. You know, those flying reptiles that looked like dragons had some sort of weird freaky accident. And this thing was just trying to catch lunch, which is a normal thing for a pterosaur to do. Well, this pterosaur grabs a small fish and starts swallowing it, which again, very standard. But then this massive predator fish jumps out of the water and clamps down on the pterosaur's wing. That fish was going for the same small fish and basically grabbed the wrong end of the food chain. Now the pterosaur is stuck. It's got half a fish hanging out of its throat and some angry lake monster attached to its wing. The weight drags it down into the water where pterosaurs, shockingly, don't do great. The fish realizes it's made a huge mistake because pterosaur wings don't exactly fit in fish's mouths. The wing gets jammed in its teeth and it can't let go. So now we've got a drowning pterosaur and a fish that's essentially handcuffed to a corpse. All three animals here died. The little fish got eaten, the pterosaur drowned, and the big fish suffocated because it couldn't close its mouth properly with a wing stuck in there. Scientists found them all tangled together in German limestone, creating what might be the worst domino effect in prehistoric history. History. The whole thing probably happened within 30 seconds, which is just long enough for everyone involved to realize how badly they'd screwed up. And speaking of terrible timing, some dinosaurs couldn't even sleep safely. In China, there's this spot where they keep finding dinosaurs that died in their sleep. And I mean literally in their sleep. These weren't dramatic deaths or epic battles. These guys were just taking naps when a volcano decided to ruin everyone's day. The site is packed with feathered dinosaurs all curled up in sleeping positions. One species even got nicknamed to the eternal sleeper because two of them were found in what looks like burrows, just lying there like they dozed off and never woke up. What happened was pretty straightforward. Volcano erupts, hot ash flows everywhere. Dinosaurs get buried alive while sleeping. The whole thing probably happened fast enough that most of them didn't even wake up before they suffocated. Fossils are actually so well preserved that you can see individual feathers and even see what they had for dinner. That's because volcanic ash is really good at stopping decay. It cuts off oxygen and basically freeze dries everything instantly. Some of these dinosaurs were found with their necks arched back and limbs all contracted, which is what happens when you suffocate. It's not exactly peaceful, but at least it was quick. The really messed up part is that this wasn't even a rare thing. This particular area got hit by volcanic eruptions multiple times. So these dinosaurs are basically living in a geological danger zone, just hoping for the best. Spoiler alert, the best didn't happen. But other dinosaurs at least tried to run when death showed up. In Australia, there's a giant rock slab covered in thousands of tiny dinosaur footprints. 
they tell the story of what might be the worst day at the office in prehistoric history. Picture this, a bunch of small dinosaurs are just hanging out by a lake, probably drinking water and minding their own business. Then something spooked them so badly that they all started running in the exact same direction at the exact same time. The footprints show everything. You can see where they were walking normally, then suddenly every single track changes to a full sprint. Some footprints are deeper where dinosaurs slipped in the mud, others over lamp where someone got trampled. What scared them is still up for debate. Maybe a big predator showed up looking for lunch. Maybe there was a flash flood. Either way, these little guys went from zero to pure panic in about two seconds. The footprints are so chaotic that you can practically hear the screaming. Well, whatever sound small dinosaurs made when they were terrified, which is probably not screaming, but you get the idea. Here's the thing though, we only have the footprints. There are no bodies found, so either they all escaped or their bones got washed away by whatever killed them. The tracks just stop at the edge of the rock, so we'll never know if they made it out alive. But judging by how panicked those footprints look, Probably not. Meanwhile, some animals prove that teamwork doesn't always save you. There's this fossil in Wyoming that shows 259 fish all swimming in the same direction when they died, not scattered around or floating upside down. They're still in perfect formation, just dead. These fish were doing what fish do best, swimming together in a tight group, all facing the same way, keeping the same speed. Everything was going fine until it suddenly wasn't. Whatever killed them happened so fast they didn't even have time to break formation. One second they're cruising along, the next second they're all dead, but still swimming in neat little rows. It's honestly how impressive how organized this fossil looks. The leading theory is that something poisoned the water instantly. Maybe toxic gas bubbled up from the lake bottom, or some kind of algae bloom made the water deadly. It could have been ash from a volcano that was hundreds of miles away. Fish probably didn't even know that they were dying. They just kept swimming in their perfect little school formation, but whatever was killing them did its job. Then they all sank to the bottom together, still arranged like they were following traffic laws. What makes this fossil really weird is that normally when fish die, they get eaten by other fish or scattered by currents. These guys were buried so quickly that they stayed exactly where they died. So now we have a 50 billion year old snapshot of the most polite mass death in history. But at least they died doing what they loved, unlike this next guy. This fossil from Germany shows us that being overconfident about your eating abilities isn't a new thing that humans came up with. We've got an eight foot fish here that tried to swallow something it definitely shouldn't have. And spoiler alert, it didn't work out. The fish is called Pachycormus, and it was basically the prehistoric version of that friend who orders way too much at McDonald's and then acts surprised when they can't finish it. Except instead of leftovers, this guy ended up with a death sentence. What happened was that this fish saw an ammonite, you know, those spiral shell things that look like nautiluses, and thought, yeah, I can totally eat that. The ammonite was about four inches across, which for perspective is like you trying to swallow a dinner plate hole. The fish went for it anyways though. It just opened wide and tried to gulp down this rock hard shell creature. The ammonite got stuck somewhere between the fish's throat and stomach, and that was pretty much game over. The fossil shows the ammonite sitting right there in the fish's rib cage, perfectly intact. There were no bite marks and no crushing damage. This fish literally just tried to swallow the thing whole without any kind of game plan. Either the shell blocked the fish's gills so it couldn't breathe, or it tore up the fish's insides on the way down, maybe both. Either way, this is probably the oldest recorded case of someone's eyes being bigger than their stomach. And unlike your weird uncle at Thanksgiving, this guy actually died from it. But some fish took the whole go big or go home thing way too seriously. There's a fossil in Kansas that also perfectly captures the moment where someone bit off way more than they could chew, literally. In this fossil, we've got a 13-foot fish called Xyphanctus, with a 6-foot fish still sitting in its stomach, completely whole and undigested. This wasn't leftovers. This wasn't a snack that got interrupted. This fish straight up swallowed another fish that was nearly half its own size and promptly died from the effort. You can see the smaller fish curled up inside the bigger one's rib cage. If you look closely, you'll notice there are no bite marks, no broken bones, and nothing chewed up at all. Just one fish inside another fish, with both of them dead. Apparently what happened is the big fish got a little too ambitious during lunch. It saw this other fish swimming around and decided to just inhale the whole thing. There was no planning, no strategy, it was just a greedy Money. fish. The problem is that when you swallow something that big, a few things can go wrong. Maybe the prey fish thrashed around inside and punctured something important. Or maybe the predator's stomach just exploded from being overstuffed. 
Could be that all the gas buildup from the dead fish made the predator float upside down and it couldn't swim anymore. Whatever killed it happened fast because the prey fish never got digested. It just sat there taking up space until both of them sank to the bottom of the ocean floor. But death by overeating seems almost pleasant compared to slow suffocation. In Nebraska, there's a place called Ashfall where over 100 rhinos, horses, and camels all died together around a water hole 12 million years ago. But here's the weird part. The thing that killed them was a volcano that erupted a thousand miles away in Idaho. Fine volcanic ash drifted across the entire continent and slowly choked everything to death. This was not a quick burial like the Chinese dinosaurs. This took weeks. These animals basically spent their last days coughing up glass particles until their lungs gave out. The smaller animals died first because they had smaller lungs. Birds and turtles went down early. Then the horses and the rhinos lasted longer because they were huge. But even they couldn't handle breathing in powdered glass forever. You can tell how long this took because the animals aren't scattered around in panic. They're lying peacefully next to each other, sometimes mothers with their babies. Some still have grass in their mouths from their last meal. The water hole was probably their last hope. They kept coming back thinking if they could just get some relief by drinking some water, maybe they would make it through. But the ash was everywhere, in the air, in the water, and covering all the food. One by one, they just laid down and died. Then more ash fell and buried them gently in place. But other places turned greed into an even deadlier trap. Los Angeles used to have these natural tar pits that worked better than any predator trap ever invented. Animals would wander into what looked like harmless water and get stuck in thick, gooey asphalt that bubbled up from underground. Here's where it gets really dumb. A mammoth or horse would get trapped and start making noise, and every carnivore within miles would hear easy prey calling for help and come running. Saber-toothed cats, dire wolves, lions, they'd all show up thinking it was their lucky day. Then they'd jump in to grab the struggling animal and immediately realize they'd made a huge mistake. Now you've got a mammoth, three saber-toothed cats, and a pack of wolves all stuck in the same tar pit, and none of them are able to move. But it doesn't stop there. The stuck predators would start howling and roaring, which would attract even more predators. And scavenging birds would land on what looked like free food and get their feet stuck too. The whole thing would turn into this nightmare pile of every dangerous animal in Ice Age California, all trapped together and slowly sinking into prehistoric quicksand that smelled like a gas station. They found over 4,000 direwolf fossils and 2,000 saber-toothed cats in just one pit. That is way more predators than prey, which tells you everything you need to know about how well this trap worked. The tar preserved everything perfectly, so we can see exactly how each animal's terrible decision played out. Quicksand apparently had the exact same effect on dinosaurs. In Utah, paleontologists found a 9-ton block of sandstone with at least six giant raptors stuck inside it. These weren't small chicken-sized dinosaurs. We're talking about 15-foot-long killing machines with massive claws, all trapped together in what used to be a quicksand pit. The story starts with some plant-eating dinosaur getting stuck near a water source. Maybe it was drinking and the ground gave out, or maybe it just picked the wrong spot to take a bath. Either way, it's now trapped and making a lot of noise about it. Utahraptor number one hears dinner calling and comes charging in for an easy kill. Except the moment it steps into the wet sand, it starts sinking too. Now there are two animals stuck instead of one. So Utahraptor number two shows up and sees its buddy in trouble. Does it help? Nope. It tries to steal the prey and also gets stuck. And then raptor number three arrives, sees an even easier meal, and jumps right into the same trap. This keeps happening until you've got a whole pack of apex predators all slowly sinking into the same mud pit. Some of the fossils are found with their legs pointing straight up, which means they died standing upright in the muck. The really embarrassing part is that each raptor probably thought it was smarter than the last one, right up until the sand closed over their heads and they joined the world's stupidest death. But sometimes death came during life's most important moments like labor. A fossil from China shows us that having a bad day at the hospital isn't exactly a modern problem. We've got a mother ichthyosaur here, which are dolphin-shaped marine reptiles, and it died while giving birth 248 million years ago. The whole family is preserved together. One baby is still inside the mother because it never made it out. Another baby got halfway through being born and got stuck there forever. And a third baby made it all the way out, but died right next to its mother. The labor started normally. The first baby probably came out fine, but then and something went wrong. Maybe the second baby was positioned weird, or maybe it was too big. Either way, the birth stalled and the mother couldn't push it out. Without modern medicine, that was pretty much a death sentence in prehistoric times. 
The mother died from complications, and the stuck baby never had a chance. The newborn probably couldn't survive on its own. The fossilists still arrange exactly how they died. The mother's skeleton with one baby halfway out of her pelvis, and the other baby lying right beside her. It's been frozen that way for almost 250 million years. This was actually the first time scientists found proof that these marine reptiles gave birth to live babies instead of laying eggs. So this mother's terrible day ended up teaching us something important about how these animals lived and reproduced. Not that it helped her much, but at least she died surrounded by her family. Unlike these unlikely roommates, South Africa gave us one of the strangest fossil discoveries ever found. A carnivorous mammal-like reptile and a wounded amphibian died cuddling in the same burrow. These two animals should have been trying to kill each other, not having sleepovers. The mammal thing, which is called Thranaxodon, was hibernating in his burrow during a harsh, dry season. It was just sleeping off the bad weather, waiting for things to get better. Meanwhile, this frog-like creature called Brumastega was having a really bad time. Its ribs were broken and healing, so it was hurt and probably couldn't hunt properly. The injured amphibian somehow found the sleeping mammal's burrow and crawled inside looking for shelter. And here's the weird part. The Thranaxodon didn't kick it out or eat it. It just let this random wooded animal move in. Maybe the mammal was too deep in its hibernation coma to notice, or maybe it figured a half-dead amphibian isn't worth the energy to kill. It could be that desperate times call for desperate measures, and both animals were too worried about surviving to bother fighting each other. Then a flood hit their area and filled the burrow with mud, drowning them both while they were still underground together. They got buried side by side, with the mammal still curled up in its sleeping position and the amphibian lying on top of it. CT scans show no bite marks and no signs of violence. They apparently lived together peacefully until the end, creating the most unlikely friendship in the entire fossil record. Let's move on to one fossil that was frozen in time. Burma gave us this piece of amber with possibly the most awkward moment ever preserved. Inside this chunk of ancient tree resin, there's a spider that's about to kill a wasp when everything went wrong in the best way possible for science. You can see the whole setup under a microscope. The wasp is tangled up in spider silk, totally helpless. The spider is positioned right next to it, ready to move in for the kill. This is happening exactly the way it's supposed to. Predator catches prey, predator eats prey, cycle of life continues. Then a blob of sticky tree resin comes flowing down and drowns them both mid-attack, which completely ruins everyone's day in one sticky wave. The wasp's head is turned towards the approaching spider, so it definitely saw what was coming. Imagine being that wasp. You're stuck in a web, and there's a spider closing in, and suddenly you're drowning in tree sap. That has got to be the most confusing last few seconds ever. Even better, there's another male spider hanging out in that same web, which means we accidentally captured the earliest evidence of spiders sharing webs, something that usually doesn't happen in modern spiders. This whole fossil has been perfectly preserved for 100 billion years. Every strand of spider silk is still visible. The wasp's wings are still spread out. It is the ultimate freeze frame. But moving on, baby animals had their own special brand of terrible luck. Because India gave us a fossil that captures what might be the worst first day of life ever recorded. We've got a baby dinosaur that literally just hatched from its egg and immediately met a snake that was ready to eat it. The snake, Senija, was about 11 feet long and had figured out that dinosaur nesting sites were basically prehistoric buffets. They've got fresh hatchlings that can't run fast and they're the perfect size for swallowing whole. This particular snake hit the jackpot. Three dinosaur eggs in one nest and at least one baby had just finished hatching when the snake showed up. You can see the broken eggshell, the baby dinosaur skeleton, and the snake coiled around the whole scene. The baby probably took its first breath, looked around at the big wild world, then immediately got grabbed by a snake. Talk about bad timing. The snake didn't even get to finish its meal though. While it was positioned to strike, or maybe already constricting the hatchling, something buried the whole scene instantly, which was probably a sand dune collapse or a riverbank caving in. But apparently some adult prehistoric animals made even dumber choices than newborns. Because giant ground sloths in Ecuador managed to accomplish something truly special. They poisoned themselves to death with their own poop. These elephant-sized animals found a water hole during a dry season and decided it would make for the perfect bathroom. 22 sloths all started using the same water source as their personal toilet. They'd drink from it, poop in it, wall around in it, and then drink from it again for months. As you can imagine, this turned the water into a bacterial nightmare. The sloths kept coming back because it was the only water around. 
but every sip was basically drinking liquid disease. The water got so contaminated that it started killing them. Some died from dysentery, others from straight poisoning. But here's the really dumb part. Even as their friends were dying all around them, the remaining sloths kept using the same toxic water hole. Eventually, a flood buried the whole disgusting scene, preserving all 22 sloths exactly where they died. The sediment around them is still packed with fossilized poop and chewed up plant material. The bone analysis shows that they were malnourished and vitamin deficient, which means they spent their last days slowly starving while drinking contaminated water. They had broken ribs and other injuries from fighting each other over access to the poison puddle. These sloths literally created their own death trap and then kept using it until it killed them. They killed themselves with poop. If you enjoyed watching this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. Feel free to give this video some hype points as well to help it get seen by more new people. And if you'd like to watch another one of my videos, you can click the video on screen now.